Hello, Brian McCarthy here from Bold and Break, and I am very excited that Maxon has integrated a fire simulation system into Cinema 4D. It is a long, long time coming, and it's a very positive sign that more of this is to come. We're probably going to get fluid soon. Now, before I start off, I just want to make you aware that I'm not, you know, very familiar with the pyro system in Cinema 4D yet. This is a video of improvisation and we're going to kind of learn stuff together. I've toyed around it a little bit. We're going to experiment in this video with the new pyro system. Yeah, let's get started. We are going to create a sphere. Shift C, type in sphere and we have our sphere here and right click, go down to simulation tags and pyro. And let's just press play and see what happens. Pretty, you know, pretty responsive here. We're going to put in simulation scene. You can now see that when you select your simulation scene, pyro is now added to it. So you could change some values here. Um, I just wonder if a difference in calculation of speed or calculation of caching when we're selecting a different device, but yeah, we can get into that in later videos. Okay, let's delete this for now and go into our pyro tag here let's put this on a spline T bring that down right click on our sphere put animation tags align to spline and bring this down so 20 and keyframe our position see how the fire interacts and moves and that is it's quite cool. Now, the one thing with simulations, and, and this has always been the case whenever I've worked on them myself, is art direction is the hardest part. Like you can make a quick test to make it look super cool. But let's say, for instance, the client comes back and they're like, oh, OK, so this is looking good, but we want the, the fire to be thinner. That's kind of the language a client might use. And we want the smoke to trail off and be darker. So those are the things in later videos we'll probably try and figure out. But we're just kind of playing around for now. But this is quite cool. Let's see how this pyrotag works on the helix itself. Let's just turn off our sphere. Rotate our helix here. Okay. And that is quite cool. Now, I am already kind of seeing a bit of uniformity happen. Like here, it looks a bit similar. So it's not going to be perfect because it's the first release of their, you know, their pyro system. So they're going to have to do some updates. But I'm sure, you know, with, within these settings, we can tweak things to, you know, make it seem less uniform. So we're going to just have a play with some of these settings. Uh, I'm not going to go through everything. So let's change the surface th thickness to five. See what happens here. We're closing in the surface area of where it ignites from, which is quite cool. That's, you know, looking a bit slicker, but it's a bit blurry. Um, what you'll notice here is object voxel size. If we bring this down to two, which is more than halving it, uh, we should get more detail and it's going to be slower, much slower there. You could see voxels as the mesher in Cinema 4D. When you're meshing stuff together, it's the same principle. These voxels are data points merging together to create a fire sim. I did notice in here in the pyro, there's also a voxel size as well. I would guess this also determines detail. But yeah, but it's looking good. This is quite cool. Okay. A little bit more detail added there from just changing those two parameters. I'm not sure how these interact necessarily just yet. That's something I'm going to have to figure out myself. This is the fun thing about this video is that I'm a bit clueless on this one. Some of these parameters actually are quite similar or look similar to if you've ever used X particles or any fire sim system. Even in Houdini, I've had a look at them and there are some similar uh, properties and values that Cinema 4D have used, but that is usually the case for a lot of 3D programs. There's going to be familiarity across the board. Let's see if the forces interact here with our pyro. This could be... Okay, cool. That is very cool. So our rotation is interacting. We've created this weird vortex. It's rotating the fire. Here's our rotation of it, so it's rotating around it, which is quite cool. If we were to change the coordinates of this, uh, let's just do that. Let's see if that we're going to get a, a different rotation, and it's going to 
rotate around. So we're getting kind of a vortex now, which is very cool. That is quite cool. The, the way this works on the spline is quite nice because that means essentially that uh, we can do this with text as well. Um, let's try another shape for the fire. I'm going to rotate this flower. The shape that you use with your pyrotype will make a difference to the look and art direction of how your fire sim works and looks. So let's see what how this looks with the... That is quite cool. So we're getting this very cool vortex type situation. If we increase our thickness back to 10, maybe, we'll get just more fire. That is very cool. Almost like a fire tornado. There is some tweaking to do because this is looking quite thick and the resolution is quite low. I want to see how this works with a Mo spline. So we're going to press Shift C, type in Mo spline, and we are going to spline in here, or source spline. We're going to turn off this, we'll bring this back to zero so it clears, and we're going to put the fire start. And do, do we get Okay, that is quite cool. So maybe we can animate this. Obviously, this doesn't look great right now. But we can we animate our mo spline. Can we do like a fire trail? Which would be quite cool. So yes, that is cool. Now it looks a bit janky and I'm, I'm sure there's a way to fix that. But that's a sign to me that we can do a very cool fire trail. And we have our rotation still on. Um, which is quite nice. So it's nice to see that it's this pyrotite is working and interacting with the, you know, the, the things that make Cinema 4D quite powerful. And these are just small tests I'm kind of trying out. One thing I want to see actually is we want to, I want to put our pyrotite back in here to be this. This works. I want to see how this interacts in a cloner. Um, I don't know why you'd use a cloner with this, but we'll see here. Okay, cool. Uh, let's go to our cloner. It's three. Okay, nothing's happening, which probably means we need to put the pyrotech on the cloner. Oh, that jumped a bit. So I want, what I'm looking for here is uniformity. You know, what looks the same? Is there a difference? in how each simulation looks because you want that kind of randomness for the realness and this is interesting so i'm going to pause it here and we're going to look for there is some similarities and some uniformity within this cloner which is interesting but this they're not all the same as well which is quite cool so there is a kind of a variables and randomness that cinema 4d is inputting into its system to give that kind of realism which is very cool um, if we were to add an effector, let's really push it here. Let's do something weird like, yeah, formula. Probably going to break my machine. And I think we broke Cinema 4D with that one. So, yeah, well, I'm going to actually leave it there. <laughs> um, I just wanted a quick video, quick intro into seeing how this worked and kind of share with you things I've spotted, things I've seen. Um, I think this is a good way to end the video. It's a bit of fun. Um, I am going to be doing more pyro tutorials. Um, they're not a, they're not my main priority at the moment. My main priority is to get through the redshift stuff. There's hair um, and there's other specific shaders, which I think is important to learn. But there's also now we need to figure out um, the best and most optimal way to use Redshift with um, Cinema 4D's Pyro system, which is, you know, something I'm looking forward to sharing with you and learning myself because I have used Redshift with um, simulation systems before and it'd be interesting to see what the differences are now with Cinema's integrated uh, fire system. That's all for me. Hope you had a bit of fun watching this. And um, this is kind of an impromptu video, to, you know, to kind of jump on the Pyro bandwagon. Your Instagram feed is going to be full of fire sims from all your Cinema 4D friends. You're going to be bored of it soon. Don't worry. All right, cool. Take care. Thank you for watching and goodbye and remember to like subscribe comment below